everybody, welcome back to another edition of God Made Millionaire TV, the hottest show on television. And am I ever so excited that you, yes, you stopped by. And what a show we've got lined up for you tonight. We've got waiting for us right now, Chief Waits, who's chief of police of his South Carolina town. He's also a man that God has raised up in this hour with a powerful message on leadership. He's the author of Never Have a Bad Day. You need to hear from the chief of police of this South Carolina town, this man of God that God is raising up in this hour. Without any further ado, let's crack open that vault. And let's get this show started. Chief Waits, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, thank you. Chief, I've got to tell you, people are going to tune in to this show and they're going to think, how did you orchestrate this? You know, Chief Waits, you're the first African-American police chief in your South Carolina town, is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. Okay, yeah. the first one, and uh, you're an author as well, but uh, with the chaos and the protests that are sweeping our country, God has raised up a man in this hour to speak a message uh, to over 200 nations that this show is, is broadcast to. And we were joking about it yeah. before, not about the protest and not about the rioting, but we were joking about you and I couldn't have coordinated this appearance, your appearance on this show, because this was booked months in advance, in advance for your book yeah. that has just been released, Never Have a Bad Day, A Guide to a Lifestyle of Leadership. Congratulations on this. Thank you. Congratulations Thank you. on a police chief, the first one, uh, African-American in your South Carolina town. So welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Hey, Chief, tell me about your family that's come with you on the set today. All right. Hey, I just want to send a shout out to my family that came uh, all the way from South Carolina with me here today. My mom, Frances Waits, who came. Uh, my wife, Shalice Waits. My daughter, Jasmine Waits, who's in law school right now. My son, KJ, we call him, uh, but it's Kevin Waits Jr. He's in the medical field. And my daughter, my granddaughter, uh, Miss Nolan, who's over there in the corner sleeping. But I thank them and I appreciate them for coming here with me today. So tell us a little bit about how this all came about uh, as far as you're appearing on the show. Okay, well, about uh, close to two months ago, my, my mom called me one Sunday night. It was kind of late, so I thought something was wrong when the phone rang. And I said, hello, and she said, hey, how's it going? I asked if everything was okay. She said, yeah, everything's all right. She said, do you watch the Word Network? And I said, not too often. She said, well, uh, I watched the show tonight. And I said, okay. And she said, it was really good and you need to watch it. And uh, I asked her what the name of the show was, and she said, God Made Millionaire, and I kind of scratched my head a little bit. I said, well, I never heard of that, but she said, you need to watch it. And so I didn't watch it that night, but Monday night, uh, about 11.30, I opened up my iPad and I found it, Googled it, found it, and you know, it was yourself and you were interviewing Apostle J.O. Cash. It seemed like y'all were talking to me. I mean, it really hit close to home. Right. It sounded like y'all were talking to me. Cut my iPad off. You know, my plan was to go to sleep and I couldn't sleep. So I got up about 1.30 and I know at the end of your show and on your website, it talked about if you felt like you had a uh, God-given gift or an idea, you know, to fill out this questionnaire. And so I filled out the questionnaire and I went to bed. And the next day I got an email from your show saying, hey, do you mind talking to a producer? And to be honest, when I got the email, I kind of said to myself, yeah, you know, they, they send these automated emails to everybody. Right, the police chief in yeah. you, you, you were skeptical. I was, skepti I was skeptical. Right. I was skeptical. And I said, they send these, they, these automated emails to everybody. And then the following day, which was Wednesday, about 2 o'clock, I got a call from you. Right, right. Yeah. And really, we talked a little bit about your book, mm -hmm. Never Had a Bad Day. Now, at the time that you and I talked, no rioting was going on in our country. Right. There were the pandemic was going on, but mm -hmm. none of this rioting and the, the protests that right. have uh, really swept our country had, had gone on. And you had scheduled this time for right now. And I just, I, I remember talking with mm -hmm. you 
about a week ago going, the heaviness of this moment yeah. is, uh, is very present to me. It's a heavy yeah. moment because yeah. I don't think that you and I couldn't orchestrate this moment in time. And I, I think that it's important right now for people to hear from you, especially in our communities that across the nation that are in fear right now and that these protests are happening. Uh, your perspective especially as somebody that God has raised up as the first African-American police chief in his South Carolina town. That's an epic accomplishment, chief. So I'm going to refer to his chief right. out of respect right. Right. Uh, for the balance of this interview. But what is your message in the, in the midst of this chaos right now uh, that our country is going through, the, the protest? Uh, what is your message that, that, that you have for for the nations, really. Yeah. Well, my message is that, um, you know, I know that there's a, there's a lot of chaos and protest and, and, and different things going on. And, you know, I have n absolutely no problem with, uh, you know, people exercising their constitutional rights. And uh, I understand that people are angry, people are frustrated, uh, people are hurting. And I am too. I am too. And, you know, I have a pretty, uh, you know, unique situation with, you know, with the topic being racism and different things going on. So, you know, oftentimes I talk to some of my colleagues and, and, and you know, and and I can say that, you know, um, I'm, I'm black and blue. You know, I'm an African-American first and uh, but I'm, I'm in law enforcement. And so the pain and the frustration and the anger I feel with some of the things going on um, as an industry, we have some changes that we need to make, but we got to find a way to get on the same page, uh, the community as well as law enforcement. And back in the day, you know, the, the saying was, if you just meet me halfway, we can make things happen. But due to the state we are in the country and, and, and the community not trusting the law enforcement, law enforcement has to reach further. We have to reach beyond the middle to engage the community. And, uh, and, and, that's, and that's where I am. We have to reach further, but in order for us to heal, in order for the, for the nation to heal, we all have to work together. Well, one of the ways that you reach further, I believe, and we're going to put a, a shot up on the screen, you recently marched. Can you tell us about that? Well, we were blessed to be contacted by some organizers who wanted to get together and, and, and have a peaceful protest. And, and, you know, like I said, we, you know, I support that. We support that. And, uh, and we got together and, and they organized it, you know, on their own. And, and we were there to really keep everybody safe, you know, make sure that they were able to exercise their constitutional rights. Uh, without anybody, you know, bringing harm to them, and uh, and everything went fine. Every, you know, they had their peaceful protest, and uh, and I, and I marched right along with, you know, with the protesters, and uh, and everything was fine. You know, I, I caught a little flack uh, about marching. You know, uh, really. You know, there there's some people that think that law enforcement and, and police chiefs shouldn't shouldn't be a part of anything like that, and 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 that we should stay neutral. And I believe that people need to hear, especially during times of chaos in crisis uh, that people need to hear from their leaders and they need to know where they stand. And like I said, we were there to protect everybody, everybody. And so I didn't have any, didn't feel any way funny about, about participating. Right, what would you say to the young people in our community right now that have this anger and, and really, you know, growing up, you know, uh, I wanted to be mm -hmm. a police officer. I mean, I think a lot of kids, a lot of boys want to grow up and, and do it. I, I believe it's a calling mm -hmm. to be a police officer. What would you say to the young people now that were considering this, this career path as a police officer now in this environment that we now find ourselves in and go, you know, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe God has called them to police work, mm -hmm. right, to that profession. But what would you say to them? I would say to them that, uh, just like you said, that it, that it truly is a calling. Um, law enforcement to me is, is a ministry. It is a noble, noble profession. You don't do this to get rich, but you do it because you have a heart to serve. And you do it because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when it's all over, I don't want to have a half a tank or a quarter tank of gas. I want to be on empty. And, right. and that's why you should go into it. If you have a heart to serve, uh, you have a heart to help people, you want to change some of the things that you see that are going wrong, get involved and be a part of it because we need, we need young people's help. We need their help. Right. Let's talk about your book. Let's talk about your book, 
never have a bad day because when you and I initially talked a few months back, we talked about this book. You're mm -hmm. very excited and you told me the story behind the book. So let's transition into the book. Okay. Okay. Well, first, before I even go there, uh, I'll tell you that during the process, you know, trying to get the book done and pushing it out, um, the pandemic hit. Right. And so, you know, I was talking to my, my publisher one day and I said, you know what? I just don't know if this is the right time to continue on and push this book out. And to her credit, she said, absolutely, it is the right time. You know, I don't know what you're thinking, she said, but you need to shake it. You need to get, we need to get this book out. This is the time the world's going through something. People need to get this book. And that was prior to the cry out for civil justice right now, you know. But to answer your question, several years ago, I got a call from an employee and they said they needed help. And I said, okay, and, and you know, follow protocol, got them help. Everything seemed to work out fine. A couple of months later, I got another call from the same officer and, uh, you know, I kind of shook my head when I saw the phone because I thought something was wrong. And they, they really just called to say, thank you. You know, I appreciate what you did. And I said, nah, you know, I really didn't do too much other than, you know, my job and, and follow protocol. And they said, nah, you did more than that. Uh, because, you know, what you don't understand is, is if you didn't answer the phone that day, I was prepared to take my life. They said, so no, you didn't just, you didn't just do your job. And they said, the only reason I even bothered to call you was because you never seem like you're having a bad day. You know, up until that point, I didn't see it that way, uh, but, but going through that experience helped me realize how important leadership is. Uh, and from that day forth, uh, you know, that, that's been my motto. You know, as leaders, we cannot afford to have a bad day because we never know what somebody's going through. And when we get caught up in our own stuff, you know what I mean, our own right, mess, right. we miss out on opportunities to lead. Right. Well, I, I think the point is made is, is when this officer called you in that moment, if you were having a bad day, mm. it would be reflected in how you answered the phone. Even something as simple as that, because yeah. listen, I'm raising my hand up here, right? I've been wrestling alligators, mm. I've been putting out fires, right. and all of a sudden an inconvenient call comes in and, right. and that weight of that moment is on you and you, it's reflected in your voice and this officer had you been caught up in your stuff mm -hmm. and all the drama that was going on in your life who knows if that officer doesn't hang up the phone mm -hmm. and say forget about it yeah and what a transformative yeah. moment yes in your life and i remember you telling me tc as a leader of men mm. and women, I cannot afford to have one bad day. No, it's too much at stake. And you know, before, for everybody watching, before you cut the TV off and say, this guy's crazy, just listen for a minute. Um, oh, they're not cutting it, the TV off. <laughs> you know? Not on this show. I hear you. You know, but technically we're human. You know, we all have bad days, you know, whether it be, you know, you woke up with a headache or your neighbor's dog barked all night or, you know, your significant other is getting on you, whatever, whatever. We technically we all do have bad days. But like we talked about earlier, leadership is a calling. And if you're you're leading, it's because God put you in a position of leadership. And so if he puts you in a position of leadership, he's given right. you everything you need to pull it off. And that include, includes a, a stronger back than normal to be able to deal with your stuff as well as everybody else that you got to, that you, that you're called to lead. Right. Who would you say would be somebody that would be an ideal person to read your book, Never Have a Bad Day? I would say any leader in any capacity, Fortune 500 company, preacher, teacher, law enforcement officer, police chief. If you are leading, you, you definitely need to have this book in your toolbox. Right. Tell us a little bit more about the book. Okay. Some okay. strategies. Let's hit on some of your strategies okay. Okay. that well, you have in the book. Okay. So in the book, um, we, we address, and I say we because I, I have two co-authors. Um, okay. This was, this was my vision. You know, I told you how, I, how we got right. here. But, you know, I decided that when I wrote this book, I didn't want it to just be one perspective. So I was able to get two incredible men to join me on this venture. 
a gentleman named Dr. Deshaun Rouse, who's a pastor. Right. And a gentleman named uh, Nassim Al-Akim, who was a mortgage banker, one of the top mortgage bankers in his industry. And we touch on pain points like bracing for the impact of leadership. Right. Right. So many times, you know, when we get promoted or we get that company car, or we get that office on the corner with a window or we get some fringe benefits. We think it's all good and it's, you know, time to pull out the cups and, and, and get some cake and ice cream. But leaders have to brace for the impact of leadership because it's not a matter of uh, if you're going to get hit, it's a matter of when. We get hit with the fact that everybody's not going to agree with your decisions, right? Right. We, we get hit with the, the impact that sometimes leadership can be lonely, right? Because as, right. You, as you move on, you have to make decisions and, 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 you know, and, and sometimes you may even lose friends. So we touch on pain points, like I said, bracing for the impact of leadership. We talk about uh, dealing with the imposter syndrome. Even though that you're, you're promoted and God puts you in a position of leadership, uh, leaders struggle with, am I good enough? Do I have the education? Can I pull this off? And we touch on that. We touch on that. We talk about how no leader is perfect. And as leaders, we need to go into um, situations realizing that and, and, and should always want to have diversity within our teams and sitting at the table with us because, you know, if we have everybody sitting at the table that thinks alike, then we're not stretching, we're not growing, and we're setting ourselves up for, for a trap. Right. What about other police departments? Have you spoken to other police departments? Yes, I've, I've, I've spoken to other police departments. Uh, you know, I teach a little cultural diversity training, which is a hot topic right now. Um, and I enjoy doing that as well. And I'm passionate about it because, uh, you know, it, it, it makes us as law enforcement officers, it makes us better to understand other cultures and for us to to be as diverse as possible, because the more diverse we are, it cleanses us of our biases. Right. You understand? I'm going to say that again. The more diverse we are, it cleanses us of our biases, because the more I know about you, it, it fills in the blanks and I don't have to fill in the blanks for myself. Right. Well, Chief, we're running close to the end of the interview, mm -hmm. but I don't want to close this show without giving you this moment in time to speak into the camera and to speak to those 200 nations that are watching this show at this moment in time. I believe God has anointed you. I believe he's raised you up. So I want you to speak from your heart that truth that message, because there's people that are hurting right now in our communities yeah. all across America, across the world. So I want you to take your time and I want to give you the floor to speak to over 200 nations, if okay. you don't mind. I would say that uh, that I understand and I know and I feel the pain and frustration and anger uh, that the world is feeling right now. And that as leaders, uh, like I mentioned earlier, you're called into leadership and God put us here for a reason. And like I said earlier, people want to hear from their leaders and know where their leaders stand. And uh, and I just think that as leaders, uh, you know, it's OK to, to listen, but we, we, we don't need to just listen to hear. We need to listen to understand. And we don't just need to listen uh, with our ears, but we need to listen with our hearts. Uh, and so I just think in my industry, we can do a little bit better job of listening. Give us an opportunity to continue to serve you. It's really unfair to uh, paint every law enforcement officer with the same paintbrush because the good definitely outweighs the bad. And it's our job during this crisis and chaos right now um, to help the community heal. And I tell my people that as we go out, every time we put on that uniform, every time we put on that badge, every time we get in that car, every shift we work, we have an opportunity to, to shine a positive light on our industry. Chief, can you give me an example of one of the most rewarding experiences that you've experienced in law enforcement. Give me a, a great story that sticks out in your mind of a difference you made or somebody made a difference in your life. Yeah, well, well you know, we, we talk a lot about bias and biases and, and how, you know, we should go into every situation with an open mind. We really, I mean, law enforcement should really go into every uh, situation with an open mind. And, and, and one story that stands out to me that made a difference with me was uh, a situation where I didn't go into, the, into it with open mind. I was on the way to work one day, dispatch sent one of my officers to a certain location and they said, uh, mom can't get her kid to go to school. 
I said, I'm gonna go around there and see what's going on. So I went around and the officer was talking to mom and I didn't see a little kid. And I said, where, where, where's he at? They told me his name, they told me what he looked like. So I'm riding around the neighborhood and I found him and he was sitting on the sidewalk. And uh, you know, prior to me going over there, I said to myself, oh, he's going to school. You know what I mean? I said, you know, that's what yeah. I said. Oh, he's going to school. Right. Because when I was a kid, two things were not an option, right? right? School and church were not an option. So in my mind, when I heard that, I said, he's going to school. And so I find this kid, he's sitting on the sidewalk. And I said, hey, man, uh, how you doing? He said, I'm not going to school. First thing out of his mouth, I said, well, can we at least talk about it? I got out of my car and I sat on the sidewalk next to him. And we just sat there and talked for a minute. And I said, hey, let's get back in the car. Let's ride around here and let's figure it out. Let's go back home. Let's just figure it out. When he stood up, he had on the slippers that they give uh, people as they're arrested in their, you know, process into a detention center. Right. Orange slippers is what he had on. And that, that hit me really hard because going into that situation, I thought I had it figured out. Right. I said, he's, he's going to school. Right. I didn't I didn't take an account that, that he was hurting, that he was embarrassed. Uh, and, and what he told me was that his mom took his uh, slippers and sold them to, to buy alcohol. And so I get him in the car and we're headed back to the house and I can't even I can't even look at him. I'm looking out the window and I'm looking out the window and I'm crying the whole time because the tears just started coming down my face because, number one, no kid should have to go through that. And number two, I got it wrong. I went into that situation and I thought I had it figured out ahead of time and I got it wrong. And uh, so if I, if I would have to give you one defining moment or something that helped change me for the better, that, that would be it. Chief, nowadays, nowadays to become a police officer, um, there are some requirements now, are there not? Yes. And what yes. are some of those requirements? A, a college education is that? Well, not, not necessarily. Most departments well, require some, that. Well, some do. Um, okay. Some do, but but not necessarily. You know, twenty one years old, you have to have you know clean background, at least a high school diploma. You know, you go through a series of psychological uh, evaluations. You know, drug tests, physical requirements, things right. like that. What would you recommend for the young people watching this that are thinking about coming into the? profession of law enforcement because you're highly educated you you have an accomplished background right. in law enforcement yes. uh, so what would be your recommendation as it pertains to career choice and mm -hmm. you know schooling and yeah. things of that nature yeah. yeah I would say you know if you have an opportunity to go to college go to college um, but if you don't even if you started in law enforcement I encourage all officers to even if you're in and you do not have a college go back to school you know, it's so convenient now with online, you know, online classes. There's almost no excuse, you know, to get it done. Absolutely. Chief, take us as we uh, as we wrap things up. Take us a little bit about where we can get your book, Never Have a Bad Day. OK, you can find my book at www.neverhaveabadday.net. Like I said before, if you are a teacher, preacher, leader, uh, no matter what status you're at, you definitely want to have this book in your toolbox. Well, let me take it a step further, if I may. I'm of the opinion mm -hmm. that every police department, every officer should have a copy of Never Have a Bad Day. Would you agree with me on that? I would agree with you on that. I would. And you'd smile I, saying I would, I would. Well, I would. Tell, tell the police departments across the nation. Just like Mr. T.C. Bradley just said, if you're in law enforcement, I believe that this book is very important for you to have in your toolbox. Absolutely. That means go to the website and yeah. get that book. Is yeah. that what that means? That's right. That's All right, right, Chief, you're going to come back and see me, right? I definitely will. All right, Chief. All right. Chief Calvin Waits, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right. Hey, everybody. I cannot believe we are at the end of another powerful show. And what a powerful show it was with Chief Waits, J.L., historic for our show. Absolutely, absolutely. Chief Waits, he, he did such an incredible job, such an incredible job, and he spoke from the heart, and that's what we need on this show. We need people to speak from the heart and be genuine. But another thing that he did was he talked about one of the most overlooked qualities of being a good leader, and that is the ability to listen to understand versus listening to hear. And right. he told us exactly how to do that. Instead of listening with your ears, you listen with your heart. And when you have the ability to listen with your heart, you have the ability to transform your department. You have the ability to transform your organization. You have the ability to transform your family, to transform the world. 
And at the end of the day, it's important that we listen to understand so that we can come together and really truly understand and build the relationships between each other as a human race. So true, J.O. How important do you think it was for Chief Waits to come on our show at this moment in time with everything that's going on in our country right now? How significant and how important was it for him to appear on our show at this moment? I thought it was incredibly important to see so many people needed to hear that message, needed to hear that message, whether they're law enforcement, whether they're members of the community, citizens of this country, citizens of this world. At the end of the day, they needed to hear that message. It was a timely message, and it was important that that message translated through the world to hear what it means to be a true leader and what it means to listen to understand and what it means to be able to come together and work together for a better world. Boy, you saw leadership all over Chief Waits, didn't absolutely, you? Absolutely, absolutely. That's my favorite topic. <laughs> right. And your brother is law enforcement, too. He is. Jarrell is law enforcement. Throw absolutely. a shout out to Jarrell. Shout out to Jarrell Farron. Uh, Chief, uh, Chief Waits, he definitely uh, wanted me to let you know that to hang in there and keep doing what you do. And uh, we appreciate you. Right. Well, JL, at this point in the show, you know what time it is. I'm I know gonna what let, time it is. Listen, I'm going to let you do the honors. Go ahead and, and do right. the honors. It's time for our prosperity dance. Let's get it. Big Mike, hit my music. Inside the heart of each and every one of us lies a dream, a purpose we were put here on this planet to fulfill, a God-given mission and when we tap into it, God will unleash unbelievable blessings over our lives, from our family to our finances. T.C. Bradley's new book, God Made Millionaire, will help you bring the abundant riches of the kingdom to all aspects of your life. Order God Made Millionaire today. If you have been given a God-given dream, now you can wear the most powerful success and prosperity shirt on the planet, our federally trademarked God-made millionaire t-shirt and hoodies. Thou shalt decree and thing and it shall come to pass is one of the most powerful spiritual laws for activating prosperity and success in your life. And now you can order your very own God-made millionaire shirt and wear this powerful success and prosperity decree. God-made millionaire TV host T.C. Bradley designed and trademarked these shirts just for himself to wear, but now he's made Making them available to you, his faithful members of the God Made Millionaire TV Nation. TC wrote his three best selling books and signed the deal for his nationally syndicated TV show while wearing his God Made Millionaire shirts. Our shirts and hoodies are high quality and super soft and can be ordered right now from our GodMadeMillionaire.com website. God Made Millionaire Nation, it's time for you to activate your God given dream in a big way. Go to GodMadeMillionaire.com and order your official trademark God Made Millionaire swag right now. These are the hottest success and prosperity shirts on the planet. Again, go to GodMadeMillionaire.com and order your official trademark GodMadeMillionaire swag right now.